These interviews in no way reflect the views of Arrayus Productions. This project is in no way endorsed by Arrayus Productions. As students in a continuous state of learning and frequency accretion, we each hold our own unique perspective of the teachings and how they relate to our individual experiences. It is important for viewers to remember that we are in fact self-sovereign beings with free will expression and we each carry our own perceptual filters with potential for distortion. These interviews are intended to inspire and in no way should reflect upon Iesha, Aureus Productions, or any of her work, as there is no affiliation. More information on the Alhumbra Magistracy Council of Cosmenius, the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, Tantriora, Tantriasia, and the Kelantic Science can be found in the provided links below. reached out to me tonight and has a little bit more input to share with us so uh, I believe this was like regarding past life things or what was it just I kind of wanted just to touch on stuff that I said in my last interview and where I'm at with that now because I've kind of got quite a bit of information since then okay so just starting with um Starting with what I said regarding like the evac scenario and like how I was never cool with that or you know felt like that was something I wanted to be a part of, um, and then going further asking about like agendas and all that like I was, that's because I didn't really understand like where everything was at, and I sort of. You know, I mentioned being back and forth with the work and whatnot, but that's what, after I listened to Rock's interview, it kind of cleared a lot up, um, Rakesh's interview. Yeah, and you guys talked a little bit too? Yeah, we talked a, little, we talked a lot, yeah. Um, but fail safe means no evac, and even if we do all get wiped out, the planet still is good, so mission accomplished in that sense, I guess. You think there was like, I mean, well, obviously there was a new council that came in with fell safe before, but it seems like the agenda's kind of shifted too. Like, evac's totally out of the picture now. Right. There's like no going back to evac. Right. So, so that's good. And I yeah. just needed to get that cleared up, I guess. I had had like really intense download that day and was just, it was, I had so much going through my head. I was kind of like just questioning everything and trying to scramble for answers instead of just kind of letting it settle before I said anything. So I just wanted to share that. Um, was it always like that? Like, was it always going to be fail safe? It seems like I had this conversation with somebody. Or Yeah, I had this conversation the other day actually with a friend. And it's really a debatable subject to talk about because – there are probabilities and these different timelines and different things that definitely had to happen for fail safe to occur. Oh, yeah. But was it like, like some people always ha like carried the fail safe codes and resonated with the planet's fail safe codes. So they always knew that the planet was going to ascend. Oh, or that's was funny <laughs> that you say that you mean, you brought that up in Rakesh's interview, but I just remembered thinking that before I made the choice to come here this time. I remember standing where I was standing before I said, all right, I'm going to go. And that was what I was thinking. And I even had somebody standing there next to me telling me, no, wait, no, wait. And I was just smiling like, nope, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember that now. Uh, I've been having a lot of cellular memory come back in the last week. Um, where did you go? <laughs> I'm going to go. Where did you Here. Back here this From time. From where? Uh, 
Okay, this is what this looks like to me. It looks like to me I'm standing on a space, some kind of space station, or I'm somewhere. There's other people there. It's I think it's all Blue Shield people. Pretty sure. Hmm. Um, it's it's almost like a space station or something, but it's like a really big window or a door. And there's, we were just staring. I was just staring at the planet and someone who I've actually met up with this in, in this lifetime. Her name's Sam here. But she was standing right there, and she was t one telling me, no, don't go, don't go. But I was just like, nope, going. Smiled and jumped and went, or whatever happened there. What was the transport method? Like, did you go through a gate or something, like some kind of... I don't know. Like, I almost, it's almost like I was just flying through this... Almost like if, I don't know if you've ever smoked DMT or not, but not yet. <laughs> like, I've heard a lot of stories, <laughs> like tube or something, and like it was. Uh, that's pretty much about. Mm -hmm. It's really not that. I need to open that memory up more to really answer that question. Right. Um. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, it's like yeah, and then it was fetal integration. It was definitely like another system, like another ECHA or some Something other else. Some more, yeah, yeah. Yeah, way far away. Like band on it more. It's, it's probably all going to come. It's yeah. been insane. So what, what has triggered all this? Was it a conversation with Rock that triggered it? Or do you have it anything started done? With David. It started with the sessions, the healing sessions with David. David who? David Garza. Okay. So some then, people were asking, like, what David? <laughs> in the yeah, uh, timelessascension.com. Timelessascension.com. You can hit him up on Skype. Uh, he's a really nice guy. I really like him. Really clear. Um, so that started everything. And I had just finished my third session that day. Listened to Paul's interview. And... Then things just started opening. Me and Paul talked, and then it started like opening. Like, and I was able to pull these cellular memories open farther than I've ever been before. And today, after listening to uh, Rakesh's interview, we were talking, and he was listening to my interview, and pretty much was able to piece together who I was in the J12 period. And because I, I had spoke out about having that issue with. Eisha and the drama with Asan. And wait, what was that? I spoke in the what last was... view about having that prop, like having problems with the drama, with like from with her and stuff, like her and Michael. Oh, like how she was handling the, the drama and the work and, and stuff. So okay, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. just throwing a fit and like being upset and. Yeah, the emotional healing and all the stuff that was just or that wasn't happening, I guess, and was being broadcast and all the drama and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it just like ate away at me, and I never, I just always pushed it away, pushed it away, pushed it away. I didn't want to deal with it, didn't want to deal with it. Well, it's because Miriam and Samuel left and fled to get away from John the Baptist, and I was Samuel in that time period. So it was like protecting her and bringing all of it back out. It was just triggering all that emotion from then. And so. What was Samuel's role in the Bible? I was trying to think because I was brought up you know, in a Christian I church. Out. I pulled mine out while we were talking earlier and I'm going to go through it. I know. It. There was like all these stories, you know, and I was trying to go back to Samuel because I remember Samuel. I was taught some of that story when I was younger. Right. Sure, I can pull some of it out. I mean, you know, like the Bible's been stuff's been taken out and added and whatever. And oh yeah, yeah. I've got this really nice Bible actually. Um, it's called the Companion Bible. The appendices are really awesome. Like it goes super into detail about words, Hebrew meanings of words, and all sorts of extra stuff. It's it's a pretty big book. It's like bigger than my head. Whoa. What does it have on it? Some Celtic cross or something? What is that? I'm not sure what that is. Um, maybe you could you know what it is? Something. Oh, that's got like a little mixture going. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, uh, that's cool. 
That's pretty neat. I haven't really even got to dive into that yet, but uh, but yeah, that's that's why I I processed all that today. So um, I just kind of wanted to touch on those few things because. To that person that I told you I spoke to that kind of, like, just wrote me off, it probably seemed like I was just saying, well, I don't believe what she says, and she's full of crap or whatever, and I'm sure that's how he took it. And I didn't really, I felt like just for the sake of transparency and the sake of my true intentions behind what I said, that, you know, I just said that because I didn't understand. I hadn't processed all of it, and I didn't know that there was... a Emotions. I didn't know what those emotions were from. I couldn't tell. And now I know. So I wanted to share that. You've been putting a lot of videos like on health and we were talking about dry fast and detox and stuff. I think that's a really, it's going in a really good direction to spread that awareness for other people in the group too. I think so too. I think it's super important uh, considering you know, your three, your physical body is definitely a part of this if you want to get out of here, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. That really... You want to send out anyway with your body, like, you know, you got to clean your cells up, in my opinion. Yeah. That rung true to me, like, that's kind of like the the gap in between like physical and ascension and stuff like you really have to make sure that passage which the body can I mean probably eventually will be like the passage because everything's contained in it that's what chaos teaches too like the stargates and all this our chakras are like gates it's just like the micro the macro of everything right meridian lines and these different points and stuff the azure Yeah, I always try to think back about flying through Stargates, and I have like one clip, like one little half second memory of doing that, but it, I need to expand on that too. But that's there. What was it like? What was it? It's pretty much just a picture of flying and knowing that that's what just happened, and just the sky and. There's some other people there. But I just need to really pull it open more. And be still and go inward and ask and why not? I had some memories like of being in a craft like thing, but it was like after Earth had already like ascended or something is what it felt like or, or like maybe we we're leaving parts of earth that weren't ascending or something like and all of this huh? like you're being evac'd in another timeline well it, it felt like it wasn't like this timeline but it could have been like a probability or something and Yesha was there and a lot of the people in in the work and stuff that had been in it for a long time and some familiar faces. And it was like, there was these long benches that we were all kind of all sitting on. And it was like really joyous, like celebratory type spirit of like, we made it and everything's fine. It, it didn't feel like, I don't know. It was like earth that ascended, everything was at peace, but that yet we were also going to a different place other than where earth was going like afterwards, after the mission mission type thing or something. And it was a very distinct memory that I had like right before all the 2012 stuff and the shield split. And I stayed focused on that memory afterward that we're going to pull through. That I have this memory. I know how this ends, you know, and it was like a tether to that. And we're all wearing these white robes too. Hmm. I think that's kind of symbolic of something. I don't know. Definitely. And I didn't really see where it was going after that. It was just like kind of had just left and you know, like it all had just happened type feel. Yeah. 
I can kind of, I mean, you're kind of projecting a little bit. I can pick up on it and I can see what you're seeing. I just. Well, there's people in the group I've talked with that have, have said the same thing. Um, that, well, not the exact same picture, but they have their own memory of like, of when um, just parts of themselves that didn't fall, you know, because that's such a big thing in chaos is falling and start or space dust and mm-hmm. not making it back whole and not making it back with memory and that was just a huge thing to grasp for me whenever I learned about space dust and falling and these fallen systems like oh no now, there could really be parts of myself that are trapped or and that's when the the real work really begins when you see how far it really goes because if you don't remember, you can't really retrieve. So. Right. I kept like, I have been begging for memories like this, to remember stuff like this for so long. But after everything I've learned today, there's no way I would have been able to handle any of this before. Yeah, what is this yeah. that, that's happened today? In these last couple of days, something with 2016 that's happening, these powerhouse days that are happening. <laughs> um, well, after Rock's interview, I went to that website he mentioned, that Skull, that Soul Swear website. Yeah, yeah, I wanted you to, I, I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, I don't really want to go too in-depth on that, yeah. actually, right now. But, and this is in uh, Rockmeister's interview. He he mentioned a guy that had done a reading for him, and that's what I that's why I brought up like how some KSers would take that as well. If he's not practicing KS and he's doing readings, and this could this could be distorted. It could be like fallen stuff and fallen systems or whatever. You know, right. like I can hear that like in the shield from people's reactions automatically because that's Literally. that's a big oh, yeah. thing. It's it's. You have to learn how to use your own discernment. And if you have to follow what the leader or a speaker who's just playing a role of the group says and you only stick to that and that it's like you're just like it's like falling around a prophet pretty much or something else. It, it kind of gets – it kind of hinders you almost in my opinion. I mean I don't definitely always use my own discernment on everything and I've learned that – Taking a step and finding out I'm wrong is better than being afraid of being wrong. So I just take a step and another step. And that's been working for me for the last like month very well. And I have don't work a nine to five anymore. I've got like two businesses I run. Looking to start about two more here very soon. And it's Everything just gets better every day. I just keep taking another step. Even if I have a doubt, I just take another step. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. And I learn and I reassess and recorrect. And So I just used discernment on it. And I felt the encryption was clean. Um, not once did I feel anything weird at all. And I mean, I'm I get pretty good. I get pretty good info when stuff's not right for me. Like, it's pretty obvious what What? I should shouldn't be doing what happens like what are the the warning signs that you get when something's off or what um it's sometimes just a voice sometimes things start happening like I start dropping things uh I bump into things like just it's kind of looks like I'm getting pinched by God saying hey hey or my higher self like hey Look at this better. Look at this differently. Look at this differently. Slow down. Or slow down. Oh. Yeah, that's that's a big one for me. <laughs> yeah, me too. Slow <laughs> down. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's just something I've kind of tuned into and use my intuition with and just communicate up vertically. You know, it's kind of funny last night. I hadn't done it in a while, but I sat down on my bed and I just really like relaxed and went vertical and I got a clear line and I asked, because I was going to go, you know, I'm into like doing detox stuff, so I was going to do an enema and I was like, okay, well, Voyagers 1 or Voyagers 2? It's Voyagers 2. 
And I was like, all right, what page? It was 463. just came out. I was like, what? All right. Flipped it open, and it's the beginning of a chapter. I can, let me see what it, what it was. Hold on. It was just like, wow, all right. Sweet. Like, I'm supposed to just read this this entire thing, I guess, now. And that's what I did. Ascension Cycle Dynamics is what it was. And it's funny because that, uh, that soul score thing, that's, that's what it's talking about. And that's what Betcha who was scan? What's that? The betcha? Oh, the, the reading thing. Yeah, like that reading thing was okay. just... Because we were talking about it's the about scan. cycle dynamics, and last night it was like I got clear and I went vertical and I got a secure line, and I'm like, all right, should I read Voyagers 1 or Voyagers 2? And it was Voyagers 2, and I was like, just right away that answer, and I was like, okay, what page? 463. I was like, okay, and I just flipped up in 463, and it's the start of Ascension Cycle Dynamics. And then today, after reading most of that, I still got some to go in that chapter, but. I get all this info about Ascension in that report, and it's just like, wow. And it talks about the dynamics. That's exactly what it was talking about, like between densities and what happens and how the body will shift. And it was, it struck a chord pretty hard, man. Like, it, it's been a very mind blowing 24 hours. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's been crazy. I was kind of just, like, stunned earlier, actually. Like, just even after, before I even got that report, just after talking to Rakesh, like, so much was coming at once. Like, it, I had to leave. I was supposed to go to the bank and go make a deposit, and I'm just sitting in front of my computer, just, like, frozen, like, processing. I'm like, it's funny. Now I'm looking at my clock. It's 3.33 on the dot. And, like, when I left earlier, it was 4.44. Like, I looked at the clock. It was 4.44. It was just, like... <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> like, uh, what's going on? <laughs> what do you think is happening? Like, what is uh, it? Ascension's happening soon. And what does that? What does ascension mean for like everybody on the planet? You think? Moving to a higher density. Well, I mean, how how is that gonna look? How is it gonna be acted out by people and? society just the whole planet um there's probably gonna be some like natural maybe it's not a for sure thing but i kind of there could be some natural disasters that we have to deal with when things get kind of nasty for a minute but on beyond that we'll just move up densities and Some of us will go out, come back for a brief period, and go back again, or switch around from like four to five to four to six, and just train and learn about other densities. I think it's exciting because I mean, she does mention that that there's going to be there are different people that have the coatings to be able to do that, to be able to go back and forth, and then there's some that just have enough just to shoot all the way out kind of like how much firepower you have you know in your coatings what you came in with and what you and can remember and what you've already what done. you can remember yeah that's a good way yeah, yeah. to put it yeah definitely yeah it just depends on depends on your soul and over soul and how many times you know how many what you all, what all you've completed if you completed all your lessons and Hadashi return stuff all right? that stuff all that stuff plays into it all yeah and then there's also the the ones that don't remember enough to get out of here, but to some extent carry a certain amount of codes to be able to get out of here, and I think that's where the hosting arrangements come into play. Right. I mean, even those that aren't actually physically remembering how that process works, if they are coded and have done what they've came here to do, I think... That you know, the higher self, and then whatever whatever level it is, will step in and will be guided. Give, okay. Yeah, guidance. Yeah, give guidance and to the right fear in that sense. Yeah, it's been coming up too, like fear in the in the shield and in the group. Have fear, act on fear, and 
totally. A lot of it has to do with like, oh, the beloveds are. This didn't come from speaker one of their beloveds, like, or the speaker one of their beloveds prove of this. Like, it's all. Are you allowed to say these things? Because does, is this okay to talk about? Like, you don't need anybody's permission to talk about anything. Yeah, after Rockmeister's interview, there was kind of a little bit of a backflow, kind of like the one of the posts. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah. Where it's like. But you don't. I mean, like that's even the whole point of this. Like, in my opinion, you're doing a really nice thing by providing this space and platform for people to be able to speak their feelings, and that's the only way you can heal your emotions because you feel these things, and if you don't talk about them or deal with them, then they don't go anywhere they stay there you bury them and you're afraid to talk about it because oh what might my people in this group might say about me or it's silly yeah it's like it's like religious crap that you get programmed when you're little or something oh don't don't act against my parents i mean you respect other people but they need to respect you too and you know it should you could we can talk about stuff like yeah that's the big the, the big hindering element i think is whenever communication just comes to a halt i think that's when we lose a lot of our humanity and a lot of our codings kind of start dimming <laughs> yeah cuz it's based out of a fear yeah, yeah there's nothing else it's just based out of a fear it's all fear even if you're saying well what about this person might infiltrate my something or other that's a VV game. Pretty much, yeah. You allow it to happen. But it's also, I Number think... Three in the a and is it's called self-containment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think some of it is also just... Uh, I mean, because of Indigos, let's talk candidly about some of these groups and some of the people. I know Indigos is kind of based on... You can't really discuss too much. I personally got kicked out of there for bringing up Organite. I was sharing that with you earlier. And just asking a question about Organite. Because you, you said, oh, you want to see my Organite? You had a piece of it. And then yeah. I shared the story with you about it. But right. it's but like... A neighbor makes it. It's really nice. Yeah, and you can make your own. It's really yeah. easy to make. It's, I think it's fascinating, the history of it, too. But if you bring that up in Indigos, which is the KS group... Uh, that can I mean, get you kicked out. I don't understand how that gets you kicked out when people are asking all sorts of questions like, well, what are the, what is, what is, what does the Hummer feel about this? How does the Beloveds feel about this? Like, that's the same thing that you were probably doing. Like, well, what is this? What do people feel about this? Like, what, you're asking a question like that, you're re relating it back to Kalantic science. Like, why, why, why is it, a, why does it matter? Like, answer the question and then it's done. Like, I think oh, it is kind of spooky about it. Like I don't know. I've heard some theories about this before about the different groups that there used to be that were preserving the teachings and different methods that they they did this with. You know, like th to preserve the integrity of it because in a way it does make sense that there would be different contracts and different people would have different roles to keep everything pure and just have the instinctive drive to not want to talk outside KS, you know, and, and just keep everything in this pure state, which in a way that's kind of what I'm trying to do in doing these interviews is because you have to really question these things in, in order to maintain the purity of it. And if, once you stop questioning, that's when it right. can get scary. It can get impure because you stop questioning and then you're just, it's stagnant and then things can... It's just like easily, somebody... It's just like somebody think not never questioning. They might be presented with information on the flower of life or the daisy of death actually being what it is, and they just don't question it. Like, you know, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, they need to question it because, like, well, wait a minute, does this make sense? Like, or I'm just gonna believe this because everybody else does. Yeah, it's the same mentality. Like, yeah, it's the same kind of mentality. Yeah. So you have to ask questions to get answers. It's asking the right questions, like Rockmeister said, too. It's like you have to ask the right question, but you can't ask a question in a way where you're expecting a certain answer. It's not going to work that way. You have to ask the question in a way to get an, an answer 
or an ask, just ask the question in the right way. And I don't think that's wrong of, I mean, I don't understand the whole Organite thing, like why you got kicked out of Indigo is for asking about Organite, but... Well, you can't ask questions within boxes, within confinements of boxes. Like, okay, you can ask a question, but it can only go this far in this little box, you know, of, of what that question can entail, I guess, you know, these right. rules and stuff. That's never that's and that's another thing with K, a lot of case folks is they don't they think this is the law there's nothing else this is it and it's like they're just all in that and it's there's other things too like that's not everything like one person can only bring down so much information there's other things out there and that that speaker it's just playing a role you know like Rock said in you know, you can, ADA, she even says, I just listened to like a 2001 workshop, Secrets of the Mirror and Ancient Iyani, and she says like, from your own relationship, ask your, ask vertically for yourself. She says, she says right in that workshop, read the Bible, read the Quran, do Reiki, do all these things, experiment, explore, like she's telling you to do that. Sure, yeah, she does that multiple times in workshops, yeah. yeah. Everybody else is like, I don't know where that even came from. It's like some weird old religious kind of nonsense. Like that's what I felt when I was in the Catholic Church. Yeah. Right, right. Maybe that's some of what's being kind of purged out. You know, I mean, because yeah, a, a lot of these people do have roots and who knows what. This is kind of a gathering of the tribes and different families that are all in this trying to well, heal yeah, their like, collectives. So. Like my friend I told you about was, his family was in, he was a Jehovah Witness, and his, he left, he wanted out, and his family like ousted him forever, and then they finally like started to repair their relationship, and then, it's funny, I said something that didn't agree with him and his belief, he's like 100%, like we were just saying, like, chaos or nothing, I stand with the Asia and that's it. I don't want to talk about it. And I, if I tried to like question that, it was like he just, boop, shut me out completely. He did the same pattern. He just repeated it. Like subconsciously. Like, yeah. But he doesn't know, obviously. No. It's just sub it's subconscious, definitely. But that's what I saw clear as day. Like I just saw it being played out. What about, I mean... It's just hard to to understand sometimes how people can create stigmas on other people and just say, "Oh, don't affiliate with this person, don't affiliate with that person." Oh, that, it's, so I mean, that's much. really that's a big deal too in the group. I think it needs discussed. It's not Christic at all. I mean, you could say, "Well, look, this person's going through this," you know. But I mean, didn't we all come from the same one? Isn't that like part of the teachings? You know. So, I don't think it's bad to talk about somebody, as long as you're doing so. I'm like, well, this person's probably going through this right now, so why don't you like support them? And if you have to like not talk to them, if they're like, you know, being they're like vampiring your energy away, like or trying to, then yeah, you have to set a boundary. Though you shouldn't, you don't need to set a boundary until like at some point or other you literally feel like threatened or something like. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I feel about it. Like, I don't just walk around and look at people. Oh, you you read this? Okay, you you study paganism? Oh, I'm not talking to you. Like, why would you do that? Just because that person studies paganism doesn't mean they have something else that you they might not know or that you might not know that they know that they could share with you that you could learn from them. Like, I just look at it like that. Yeah, I think it should stay open. Like, it just really should. There should just be some kind of group with chaos where we talk about other religions and news and stuff. There was a push for that with Aurora Earth and Authentic Earth to actually do that and look at news articles. They had a video up on YouTube for a while, and oh, it was yeah. taken down real yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did wanted you... people to submit. I did a little bit before it got pulled off. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted people to submit news articles. Um, relating stuff back to KS and, and then so they could like post like well this is this piece this is exactly. this piece to help that was a beautiful concept to do that 
It's exactly what we're talking about. I mean, it's the same. And then, it, and then the video was just shot down, just taken down uh-huh. in like hours or something. And only a few of us got to see it. This beautiful idea that it was just almost like a tease or something. Like, here's what we could do, but no, we're not going to do it. Well, I think they're still doing that. Or like, apparently, they're still accepting. From what I've heard, they're still accepting those. Where's Where's the site at? Where are they? Uh, I don't site? know. The person that had that information decided to cut me off for whatever reason. I mean, yeah, it, if it's a him. real site, it needs to be out there for everybody to see, right? It's like some hidden thing or something. I mean, I could go vertical and ask. I'm, I can't do it. I don't really want to do it right this minute. but It seemed like it would be like on Indigos and people would be sharing it. And it's Why does it need to be like hidden away? Right. Oh. Like, Isn't that the point? Wasn't that the point of it? To be transparent to the public and step it down? Right. Unless so. it's like a little think tank with just certain individuals or something. I don't know. But it just, this, is it, the whole, this is the whole political part of this whole thing that I I don't like at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it doesn't... I mean, I comprehend wanting to preserve things in purity. But I think there's a point when you can be a little paranoid. But maybe then there's stuff I don't know. So well, the, it used to be a lot more paranoid. Actually, it used to be the security clearance of information to be released, and nobody could just walk into a workshop in the middle of it without attending the full workshop. Like you can now with the webinars, which is way a way big change, you know, from what it used to be. And those in the know, and those not in the workshop. So, I think things are are definitely progressing. I never knew that about the workshops. That's interesting. Yeah, it was it was a huge deal. You don't you don't disclose it. And that's how I kept getting in trouble because I was sharing stuff, and people were sharing audios from the workshop. You know, to catch people up, people that really oh, that goes on though. What's up? That still goes on. Yeah. Even within those people that are trying to preserve the encryption of things, there's people recording the webinars and like on their you know, streaming stuff and recording it on their computers and keeping it like that. Yeah. It happens. I mean, people are going to share. What's up? I got to check something. Hang on one second. Okay, yeah. It's just our nature to share. You know, I mean, that's just going to happen regardless, I think. Rock wants me to call him. Okay. Yeah, we can go ahead. Yeah, I, I pretty much got out what I wanted to say and stuff. Sure. I did talk like about detox and to do a whole other just topic on just bodily cleanup and what people can do because I know most, there is a lot of people still like struggling with diet and stuff. And I mean, I've kind of experimented for the last like four years really hardcore and I started doing this like 10 years ago I started really like changing my diet so I've been doing it for a while and it's definitely something we should talk about definitely yeah I would like to like prepare it and get some of the topics and things on dry fast I actually want to look at some of the articles that science is starting to prove with dry fast too they have a lot of breakthroughs happening right now totally totally alright we'll catch up yeah we'll catch up later Take care. All right.